Shalom and welcome to Counting the Cost, a linguistic analysis of Hebrew numbers. Today we will cover the number 100. The Hebrew word for 100 is mea. Genesis 5.3 And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. So we see that it is used to measure time. Genesis 6.15 And this is the fashion of which thou shalt make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. So we see that it's used to measure length. Genesis 14.14 14. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. So we see that it's used for counting people. It's also used for counting um, animals in other verses. Genesis 23.15 My Lord, Hearken unto me, the land is worth four hundred shekels of silver. What is that betwixt me and thee? Bury therefore thy dead. So we see that it's used also to measure weight. Even though we think of shekels perhaps as uh, coins or amounts of money, it's really a measure of weight. And this is the only use for this root, is to talk about the number hundred. So we're going to look into the cognate roots to see if we can find anything uh, deeper about the meaning. Uh, cognate roots are roots that are related to each other by linguistic rules of sound shift. And there is only one for mea, and that is mea with an ayin. This word has the meaning of um, your innards. It's not designated to any specific biological function but it's more like what's ever going on inside of you. Uh, there's a great word in Yiddish that has this meaning, and that is kishkis. Genesis 15.4 And behold, the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And so we see that um, it's not referring to a biological function as from a man, but just saying that this is coming from your inside out to, uh, to conceive a child. In Ruth 1.11, and Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters, why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? And this is the only place where this word is uh, translated as womb, there is a more common word for womb in the Tanakh, and that is rechem. But here, the idea is, is there anything more inside me? Translated in Psalm 48, I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. You know that there are other words that are often translated as heart. Uh, this is, I think, the only time that this word is translated as, as heart. The idea is that it's in your insides. Jonah 1.17 Now Yahweh had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Uh, we tend to think of it as being his literal stomach, but he was just somewhere inside that fish. Ma'a has uh, another meaning, which is gravel. It's only used one time. In Isaiah 48:19, Thy seed also had been as the sand, and the offspring of thy vowels, like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off, nor destroyed from before me. Uh, I put the Hebrew up so you can see that this is actually a play on words. The uh, other meaning, the previous meaning for vowels, is the first word, me'echa, 
And then it says, it is like the gravel thereof, kimotav. So uh, it's thought of as being uh, like a grain of sand. I hope that you have no grains of sand <laughs> in your bowels, uh, or gravel for that matter. But through this, we can come to the concept of what is really a hundred. And this is something that we talk about when we talk about English grammar. There are such things that are called mass nouns or non-count nouns. There are things that we refer to as a group, and uh, we can count the individual units of the group, but the thing is a whole thing. So, for example, any liquid, water, uh, oil, tea, coffee, those things are uh, units unto themselves. We, we don't count uh, water or oh, have one water, two waters. Well, we use it maybe in, in a idiomatic sense of a glass of water. But usually if we want to count uh, any liquid, uh, we have to say a cup of oil or a cup of tea. Uh, other words that are like that are um, uh, foods that, that come in very small, fine pieces. Flour, uh, salt, rice, any grain. We don't say one rice. We don't say one flour, F-L-O-U-R. We have to say what the measure of it is. Uh, other words that are like that are jewelry or furniture. These are non-count nouns. We don't say one furniture, one jewelry, or three jewelries. Um, these are, in fact, common mistakes made by non-native speakers of English. So the picture of 100 uh, as coming through this idea of even your up to your innards uh, comes from this idea of, of a mass noun. If we have a grain of sand, it doesn't really speak to us of like the sand on the beach. We need to have a picture of many things together, many of these units together. Even if you want, for example, a small amount of rice, when, when does it become a small amount? Nobody asks for one grain of rice at a restaurant. Uh, What's a dividing line for, for each of these things? I don't know, but it's clear that we need a bunch of them before we can speak of them as a unit. Uh, even your intestines, right? What an inch or a foot out of your intestines can't accomplish the function of your intestines. They're sort of a group unit. And so it is with 100. It becomes its own group. And so we can apply this easily to the body of the believers, which is one unit. There is just one congregation or one church in the sight of the Father, even though there are so many denominations and so many di uh, different ways of observance. There's, the church is one body. The congregation is one body in the sight of the, of the Father, but it's made up of many believers. How many believers do we need to see before we know what the body looks like? Again, I don't know what the cutoff line is for that, but it is a picture of that. And as promised to Abraham, we are like the sand of the sea. Many, many, many. I'm sure you can think of other related ideas as you ponder this. In the meantime, Tasimata Inayim Ahashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.